Rod and I left the comfort and the pancakes of Audi Camp in Maun, excited for the last leg of our Botswana adventure. En route to Kwai, we aired down at Saroe and travelled along the dirt. Along the way, we encountered many beautiful ponds. We absolutely realised we were in the delta. A quick thank you to all our new subscribers. It's really exciting to see more people subscribing all the time. Thank you very much. Our campsite at Kwai Safari Grounds, number 8, was pristine. We had our own fish eagle and a resident hippo called Solo. Our first venture into the Miremi would not have been possible without him. He walked across the stream we needed to cross at just the right time. There is an African legend as to why the hippo uses his tail to helicopter his poop about. He does it to show the other river animals and the creator that he does not have any fish bones in his poop and he opens his mouth very wide for the same reason. The hippo needed to get permission from the creator and the other river animals to live in the water to protect his skin and this was conditional upon his not eating the fish. We were visiting Kwai in May of 2022 and the bush was still thick and green. We had a lovely afternoon drive in the Miremi and returned to camp. I have to say we were camped under the most truly magnificent leadwood tree and I will always remember the sound of its pods crunching underfoot as we walked. Very early the following morning, as I was firing up the kettle and Rod was stretching in the bundu top, a herd of elephant crossed the river right exactly in front of our camp. I stood as still as possibly I could. I knew that the elephants could see me, they were looking straight at me, but they didn't seem to mind that I was there. It is their river. Rod filmed the entire episode and it is just one of the reasons that we both love Kwai so much. And in fact, one of the reasons traveling in Botswana is so special.
We had a lazy day watching the river go by and watching the birds and enjoying the quiet of the campsite, which was occasionally broken by the screech of the mayor's parrots, the call of the fish eagles, and the whistling of the bee eaters. We had booked a Makara ride in the afternoon and at the appointed time Tendre appeared to take us. The Botswana government had decreed some time ago in order to conserve the ebony and kichlia sausage trees to us that Makaras need to be made of fiberglass which I'm certain makes them easier to push along with their long poles. It was wonderful, silently gliding along listening to the painted frogs and looking at the water lilies. Tendra made each of us a necklace out of water lilies which we both wore on our hats. The following day we took a drive to the Hippo Dam, which is just along the road, and spent some time watching the lions. They look so peaceful, but we were fortunate enough to see them catch a warty. Gosh, he squealed his head off. It may have been a tra training exercise, as many of the lions were quite young. There was a committee of vultures in a dead tree close by. It seems they had been feeding off a dead elephant carcass for some time, but by then all that was left was the skin. We decided to get up early the following day and have breakfast at the Hippo Dam. There is so much bird life, including lots of male starlings in the iridescent coats, herons stalking about, many flocks of white-faced whistling ducks, and of course, lots of Egyptian geese with their little ducklings, which are so cute. After driving around for a couple of hours, we headed back to camp and Rod built a lovely fire. We watched the sun go down, listening to the painted reed frogs. The next leg of our trip would take us to Savuti. We checked in at the Mobabi gate after having to exchange some money with some Brits. In fact, just a note, Botswana runs on Pula and many of the national parks do not have credit card facilities. Make sure you have enough Pula on hand to pay your park fees. En route to Savuti, we encountered thousands of buffaloes. It was quite a sight to see. The road is as poor as advertised. The rangers at the gate will advise which route is most possible on a particular day. Our campsite was thick sand that just got into everything. We were parked under a huge old camel thorn tree next to the Savuti channel, which was absolutely dry. We did the work. We got up early and drove along in the bush. We didn't see much, but we did have some fun tackling the quarry hill. The drive was rocky and steep in places, but the view was spectacular. We had a 360 degree view of the bush, with absolutely no human infrastructure in sight. We have included a fair amount of footage on our trip up the quarry hill so that anyone who wants to go and tackle it gets a good idea of what they're in for.
On the descent, Rod got out to ensure he chose the best possible line. The clearance on our cruiser is not huge as we have a rooftop tent and a 270 degree awning and there is a risk of being top heavy if the vehicle is too high. The view of the descent was as spectacular as from the summit of the hill. One can clearly see the curvature of the earth. We spotted a number of water holes from the hillside, so we spent the balance of the afternoon exploring those. In the evening, we met up with a couple of fellow travellers. They were from Germany and they have travelled Africa, north to south and east to west. That's actually one of the most fun aspects of travelling, is meeting people from all over the world. If you have enjoyed this video, please do like it and subscribe. We have many, many more adventures to come.